Lord, it's really good to be able to meet together, to gather in your name, to worship you. And we thank you for everyone who's here this morning, for Bob on Zoom, Lord. We pray for those who are watch the recording later and ask that through our time together, we will meet with you and know your presence of your Holy Spirit. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, So just, hello. So let me encourage you that at different times when there's the opportunity to participate, yeah, to speak up. So it's really natural that when we pray to put a head down, because we were kind of talk, put your hands together and close your eyes and put your head down. Um, but um, what, you know, it's really important when we're together, that if we're saying something aloud, that we say it loud enough that everyone can hear and that it gets picked up on the microphone as well. So let me just uh, en encourage that. And if I should become too quiet, please do tell me. <laughs> well, Jan says it sometimes happens. She just doesn't... <laughs> okay, there was a certain scepticism about that. So, so that's done. So we're going to start with a new version of Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus that we did a little while ago, and most of it's what you would recognise. But we were looking at a YouTube video on the background to this hymn, and um, Helen Lemel, who was w one of two sisters who were very um, effective uh, in, in the Lord's work, was given a tract by a, vi uh, a visiting missionary, and the leaflet was entitled Focused, and in it, was this exhortation. So then, turn your eyes upon him, look full into his face, and you will find that the things of earth will acquire a strange new dimness. And apparently she read the tract and went away, and sort of within a day or so, wrote the hymn that has become so well known, yet yeah, the, the words on it inspired her to write the hymn, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. There you are. So every day is a school day, <laughs> and um, but we found that quite interesting when we were watching it the other day. Uh, so turn your eyes on Jesus. Um, the first verse you'll recognise exactly as the traditional ones. Then there's um, other verses to the same tune and a chorus that we've done before, but it's very simple, and you'll pick up as you go along. Please stand if you'd like to, or sit if you prefer not to. <coughs> Life 
Jesus, to you we lift our eyes. Jesus, our glory and our prize. We behold you, adore you, our Saviour ever true. Oh, Jesus, we turn our eyes to you. to us. <coughs> the readings from the fourth chapter of Nehemiah. When Sambalat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. He ridiculed the Jews, and in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, he said, what are those feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring the stones back to life from these heaps of rubble, burned as they are? Tobiah the Ammonite, who was at his side, said, What they are building, even a fox climbing up on it would break down their wall of stones. Hear us, our God, for we are despised. Turn their insults back on their own heads. Give them over as plunder in a land of captivity. Do not cover up their guilt or blot out their sins from your sight, for they have thrown insults in the face of the builders. So we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height, for the people worked with all their heart. But when Sambalat, Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites and the people of Ashdod heard that the repairs to Jerusalem's walls had gone ahead and that the gaps were being closed, they were very angry. They all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and stir up trouble against it. But we prayed to our God and po posted a guard day and night to meet this threat. Meanwhile, the people of, Judea, of Judah said, The strength of the labourers is giving out, and there is so much rubble that we cannot rebuild the wall. Also our enemies said, Before they know it or see us, we will be right there among them and will kill them and put an end to the work. Then the Jews who lived near them came and told us ten times over, wherever you turn they will attack us. Therefore I stationed some of the people behind the lowest points of the wall at the exposed places, posting them by families with their swords, spears and bows. After I looked things over, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials and the rest of the people, don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your families, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your homes. When our enemies heard that we were aware of their plot and that God had frustrated it, we all returned to the wall, each to our own work. From that day on, half of my men did the, did the work while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bows and armour. The officers posted themselves behind all the people of Judah who were building the wall. 
Those who carried materials did their work with one hand and held a weapon in the other. And each of the builders wore his sword at his side as he worked. But the man who sounded the trumpet stayed with me. Then I said to the nobles, the officials and the rest of the people, the work is extensive and spread out and we are widely separated from each other along the wall. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, join us there. Our God will fight for us. So we continued the work with half the men holding spears from the first light of dawn till the stars came out. At that time I also said to the people, let every man and his helper stay inside Jerusalem at night so that they can serve us as guards by night and as workers by day. Neither I nor my brothers nor my men nor the guards with me took off our clothes. Each had his weapon, even when he went for water. We're going to see, be still for the presence of the Lord next. And you have that sense that that message, be still for the presence of the Lord, was what Nehemiah was saying to the people through all sorts of panics in what, uh, what Felix just read to us. And um, I always think it's really good to read a good chunk like that. And you get the sense that it's telling you a story, don't you? And you really get that sense of, of latching into the story rather than just a few verses here and there. So be still for the presence of the Lord. Again, we can sit or stand. It's number 50. <laughs> Hello. <laughs>
So we, last week, we heard that they were all working on building the wall, and um, the dip, we, Lynn took on the interesting reading. <laughs> uh, um, we're going to have a test now on who did which bit of the wall. <laughs> No, we were looking uh, on Wednesday at a graphic, which I was going to try and, uh, and show this morning, but the resolution of the text was such that it wasn't good enough and I haven't managed to sort it out. But it was interesting. There was a graphic which had a diagram of the walls with, the, with it coded in different colours for, to, and saying the names of the different people who were responsible for what bit of the wall, which was quite, uh, quite interesting. But anyway, so all the people had worked together on building the wall under Nehemiah's direction. And then um, the people who were opposed to them start on their first tactic, which is to ridicule them. So you can see in these verses, um, this group of people who are ridiculing the Jews at what they're doing in trying to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And it always seems to me that nothing changes very much. If today, as Christians, there are times when people ridicule us, aren't they? And when we talk about, um, actually, we believe God's building his church, and it's a time when we've we need to be looking to God to build and to build new things in church. People outside say, no, church is a thing of the past. Nobody's interested in, in church anymore. When we were in Belfast, not many weeks ago, when it was a month ago now, roughly, when we were in, in Belfast, we went to the Gettys concert on the Saturday evening. And um, then on the Sunday, we, we had a good look around Belfast, didn't we? We went to church on, on Sunday morning, and then we, we, we did various things around Belfast in the afternoon. And then um, later in the evening, we went out for dinner to, to a restaurant and um, the waitress was asking us what we were there for. And I said, oh, we'd come over to this concert at the SSE Arena. She said, oh, who was that then? I said, oh, it was Keith and Kristin Getty. They're Christian musicians now based in the States, but originally from Lisbon, just up the road. She said, what, in the SSE Arena? There was a Christian concert in the SSE Arena. And I said, yeah, yeah, there was about 11,000 people. She said, 11,000 people? I said, yeah, they're very big in the Christian music scene. She said, I didn't know there was a Christian music scene. <laughs> I said, oh, there is. <laughs> There's a very active Christian music scene. And uh, the, hymn, the hymn we've just sung is one of the few more modern songs that has kind of made it into the mainstream, that all sorts of churches and cathedrals sing it, Latin in Christ alone, and one or two others of the last 40 years. But literally, I mean, when you actually look and see the, the songs and hymns that are being written to worship God, it's incredible the amount of new music that's produced every day as a fresh expression of worship to God. And it's easier for us to sing the ones that we know, yeah, and um, it's right for us to try and find that balance. But it's really important that we recognise that the Holy Spirit is inspiring new hymns and songs and fresh expressions of peace people's faith all the time every day and um, there's some really good ones and as there always were there's some not so good ones and um, what tends to happen is that the good ones last and you know I don't know whether you know but we've probably seen about 50 John Wesley hymns here if we were to look at it he wrote thousands yeah yeah so it was just the same then the good ones lasted yeah and the others didn't yeah so it's likely that we'll see you know, a wider sort of range of stuff that's contemporary. So, yeah, God is at work doing new things. And um, there are, in lots of towns and cities in this country, big churches full of young families and young people engaged in worshipping God in different ways. Ways which um, sometimes we step into and think, this is a bit noisy, <laughs> yeah, or it's a bit, or, and, and some people go, drums? <laughs> Drum? Uh, but, but, um, but, you know, um, it, it doesn't matter. God's, um, it, what matters is, are people actually really 
worshipping God. And with all forms of music, whether it's traditional music or modern music, it's very easy for worship to switch to being performance and people to be more concerned about the music than they are about the expression of worship to God. And that happens with every type of uh, music if we're not careful. And it's really important that we hang on to actually what really matters is our hearts expressing our love for God and our worship to him. But, so, they're ridiculed and um, this really amusing insult at the bottom, even a fox climbing on the walls would break down their wall of stone. It's a bit of derision, isn't it? That, yeah, that's never going to work. Um, but what do they do? They pray. And Nehemiah, we've got to remember, Nehemiah is recording all this. Hear us, O God, for we're despised. Turn their insults back on their own heads. Give them over as plunder in a land of, of captivity. Don't cover up their guilt or blot out their sins from your sight, for they have thrown insults in the face of the builder. And so they carried on and they rebuilt the wall until all of it reached half of its height. For the people worked with all their heart, and with more, more than all their heart, with all their strength and mind as well, <laughs> I reckon. Um, yeah, they, they used their whole being to focus on the task in hand. And now the people looking on suddenly have a different perspective. So from they're never going to do it to there's not a chance of this happening, not in a million years are they going to work this out, which is the kind of mickey taking that's going, oh, they are doing. Yes, yeah. and um, you know, and, and when Sam Ballot and all the different people have gone ahead and the gaps were being closed, they go from derision to anger because they really don't want this to happen. And when just taking the Mickey doesn't work, then they plot it to come together and fight against Jerusalem and stir up trouble against it. And all over the world, Christians in countries where the gospel is advancing, experience having trouble stirred up against them and being uh, subjected to persecution because people looking at the fact that they're being effective in, in, their, in their witness. Um, my personal experience of that is uh, from India, where I've seen it at first hand. I know it's happening in lots of other places as well. And, you know, for, from a, a, a kind of numbers perspective, people think, oh, there's not many Christians in India, but um, there's probably only about as many Christians in India as there are living people living in the UK. <laughs> if you work out three, three to four percent of the Indian population. Yeah, so it's a small percentage. Uh, but, it, but, you know, uh, there's a church that is growing and reaching out and reaching out because people are really committed to the Lord and they are facing incredible persecution because they, the spread of the gospel challenges the status quo and challenges the institutions that are there because it tells people actually they're all equal and and Jesus loves each one, whether they're low caste or high caste. It tells them that actually we're not in a battle of reincarnation, of coming back, working out how we're going to come back as something better, but in a place where we, we come to Christ and we're assured of what our next life is. And um, Christianity should set people free from being controlled by one another. Sadly, at times, expression of Christianity have resulted in very controlling versions of Christianity. But that's something that we need to be aware of and make sure that we don't fall into that. Um, but, you know, they, they faced opposition. But we prayed to God and posted a guard day and night to meet this threat. So what would be the equivalent of us posting guards, would you say? If we, if we wanted to have an equivalent to posting guards to watch over the work, work what would be the equivalent? Night watchman. <laughs> well, a night watchman, a watchman is a good thought. Uh, yeah, a good thought, but that's the equivalent physically. But if we're thinking about the work of the church and the sort of attacks that we face, what would be our equivalent? Prayer. Prayer. 
Yeah, having people who, as well as people who are doing the stuff, people who are praying and praying and providing prayer cover. Um, I think Jean mentioned that when people talked about street pastors, when street pastors always have a prayer team praying alongside the people going out on the street. And it's really important that we don't get so caught up in being busy that um, we, we forget about praying. And um, I'm somebody who can find it much easier to think about doing the practical things than to the prayer focus. Um, when we were on holiday in Bulgaria, I started to read a book which was I got completely enthralled by, which was encouraging people to pray in tongues at, at all times. And then various things happened and Jan had an accident and um, I stopped reading the book and focused on sorting out all the things that needed to be sorted out and everything else. And then Jan read it and now she's really annoying going around praying in tongues all the, all the time. <laughs> yeah. But, so I say that, it's really annoying, cause, but I have to stop and say, hang on, but this is what's needed. So I have to stop and repent of being kind of annoyed that this is what she's doing because I, I know that this is what's needed is that there's serious prayer going into things but it isn't always ki kind of well, well could you just do this it's, but anyway you do it alongside other things but I'm just saying I was just thinking when you said that when I asked that question at Bible study towards the end it wouldn't be annoying for God because you both explained that praying in tongues is your spirit to God's spirit so he'd be absolutely delighted John yeah yeah absolutely he's, he's delighted yeah but 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 there's um yes the uh, i'm just being open the times. <laughs> you won't believe this but at times i'm perhaps less spiritual than i might like to be <laughs> there's a there's a there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's nothing no point in having church if we're not honest <laughs> and uh, so that's that's the, the way it is. But they prayed and they said that was the important thing. To, sorry, they posted a guard and they prayed. And then, as they're getting on with it, what's the next thing that happens? And this is going to be what typically happens in our sort of thing as well. The people doing the work says, this is all getting a bit too much for us and the work's hard. Yeah? And uh, when we try to do things, there's obstacles and that sort of thing. And nothing is as straightforward as we thought it was. And also, they're starting to look, so they're getting a bit weary, and they're starting to look and say, before they know it or see it, that the enemies will be right there, and will um, kill them and put an end to the work. And other Jews who lived by came and told them ten times over, wherever you turn, they will attack you, so the people around can see that there's opposition all around. And so within the people doing the work there starts to become a fear arising and a protest we can't keep going we can't keep doing this we're getting worn out and um, and we're frightened of getting of getting killed and therefore nehemiah he says he stationed some of the people he took some of the people and dedicated them to being behind the most vulnerable places at posting them by families with their swords, <coughs> spears and bows. So in spiritual terms, prayer warriors looking after different aspects of the work and focusing on different areas so that each area was being covered and, and protected with, you know, in our terms with prayer. And after I looked things over, I stood up and said to the people, the officials and the, uh, and the rest of the people, don't be afraid. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your families, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your homes. And that message would be the same message. I know that if I was in India with um, a group of pastors, pastors who'd been attacked and persecuted, whose houses had been destroyed, um, their leaders would be saying to them, but don't be afraid. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome. He is with us. And that wherever it leads to, this will work out. And that they would say, the people we were talking to would say, it doesn't matter what gets taken from us, what we've got is Jesus. And when we've got Jesus, we know we have an internal hope. And whatever it is that we lose, we've still got Jesus. And nobody can take him away from us. 
And so, remember the Lord, who is great and awesome, needs to be our encouragement to one another at all times, when we're weary, that if we're weary, if we're running out of ideas, if we're running out of strength, what we need is more of God, not more of, let's leave things and just go and do something else. What we need is more of God in our midst. And when the enemies heard that they were aware of the plot and how God had frustrated it, we all returned to the wall, each to our work. And then ne ne Nehemiah split the people. Half of the people did the work, while the other half did the defending. And that's perhaps a good measure in terms of the way for church to operate. That at any one time, half of the people are doing stuff and half of the people are praying, you know, in terms of the, the focus of things. And... Um, the officers posted themselves behind all the people of Judah. If there were military people here, they said that was pretty typical of officers <laughs> in, uh, in most situations. And the Scots would say they always sent the Scots in first. <laughs> but um, uh, those, it, my experience. But those who carried materials did their work with one hand and held a weapon in the other. So if they were getting on with doing um, stuff that didn't require both hands, carrying stuff backwards and forwards, they'd be watching out and ready to defend, ready to, 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 to defend. How we're to be, you know, a bit like what we were just talking about. Part of us is praying and part of us is getting on with doing the practical thing. There are lots of things that we can do and pray at the same time. And each of the builders wore his sword at his side as he worked, so they were ready. But the man who sounded the trumpet stayed with me. So the person who sounded the trumpet was the person to let everybody know if there was something happening. And so he stayed with Nehemiah. And so Nehemiah would tell him when to sound the trumpet. And I said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, the work is extensive and spread out, and we're widely separated from each other along the wall. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, join us there. Our God will fight for us. So they've got a mechanism for saying, this is where we need help right now. And uh, come and join us here. Struck me. What might be our equivalent of the trumpet? Any thoughts? What's up? What's up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not to be afraid that if one of us has a need, to put it out there so that we know about it. Whether it's a a practical need, um, you know, that really need that justifies getting people to help or a, or a need to get people to pray. It's something we can put out to one another and communicate to, to one another with WhatsApp. Thank you, Tricia. Or with other means, if we don't use WhatsApp. Um, and so, it says, they continued the work with half the men holding spear from the first light of dawn till the stars came out. And at that time I also said to the people, let every man and his helper stay inside Jerusalem at night so that they can serve us as guards by night and as workers by day. This being a Christian, it's a full-time commitment. You know, it's not something that we do for an hour or two on Sunday. Yeah, It's something that if we're not actually doing, so, you know, obviously we need to sleep, but that we live in our Christian life as, as our life, not as a little bit of something we do. And it's something that I've always found really interesting when you talk to people in families and sometimes they say, oh, I'm quite happy with them going to church, I go and play golf. And it's the sort of thing, that's her, that's her hobby and this is my hobby sort of thing. But um, actually living life as a Christian isn't a hobby that we do in our spare time, it is our life. And, uh, it, you know, everything, that, that's the thing at the centre of our lives. And um, the illustration here from Nehemiah, which um, some of us might find um, a, li a little um, less than appealing at this point. Neither I nor my brothers nor my men nor the guards with me took off our clothes. Mm -hmm. Each had his weapon when he went to water. So they didn't get undressed and go to sleep at night. They stayed fully dressed, ready for action. Um, I, I know that the customs around changing and washing clothes were very different a long time ago, due to practical reasons. Um, yeah. Um, so could we relate some of those things, like to the um, the armour of God, where it says put on the full armour of God, yeah. and, the, and the sword.
Lord and the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And, uh... Jan, we can have a second sermon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, completely. Yeah, 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 no, very good, very good, yeah, no, it's fine, yeah, no, it's lovely, no, please, it's, it's exactly the, it's, it's exactly right, thinking about that as being the armour of God and what we have as, as spiritual, as spiritual weapons and we're in a, as they are in, they were in this incredible challenge to rebuild the walls of, of Jerusalem. We're in a challenge, aren't we? A challenge to see the Lord's work extended, not decline managed, but um, new things happening. And to pray for the right things. And if we look at it, if ever we looked at it and thought, well, we know how to do that then we're in the wrong place. Whenever we look at it and think, this is too great a challenge and it can't happen without the Lord doing something, then, then actually that's the exciting time when we look into him and say, what are you going to do? What are you going to do next? And um, we so easily revert to we, something good happened and we keep doing it, but we need to always be looking to say, Lord, what is it, what is it that's new? What is it that you want us to be doing next? Any other thoughts from from the from what we've talked about this morning? when they went for water it was very mundane uh, just a normal like we would put the kettle on and sometimes we think prayer is just the big things yeah and but it's as you were saying it it isn't it's for everything yeah yeah for everything for when you've lost your passport you did, you prayed and come on, tell us. Yeah. Oh, did you said it was on me, didn't you? No. Oh, did you? Oh. <laughs> so I um <laughs> so some of you know that I've had like a reasonably challenging few weeks and um anyway the the case was over and I realised that I had to go to Paris. I was supposed to go on Friday and I needed my passport, and I just couldn't find my passport anywhere. I turned the house upside down, I emptied boxes we hadn't looked at for 10 years since we moved into the house, could not see it, and I went to the chapel, I thought I'd left it here, asked all my friends, phoned my mum, and in the end I said, that's it Felix, I, I can't get a new passport in the next week because it's a replacement, not a renewal. Um, the only thing left is we're gonna have to pray. And I he said, okay. So I prayed and said, please God, please send me my passport. And I went to go and buy some food and Felix went home and he phoned me in about two minutes and he said, your passport is on the dresser. And I said, it can't be. I've looked there like umpteen times and it was there the whole time. Three days I've been looking for my passport. Wow. And as it happened, my trip was cancelled. But, um, <laughs> but now I know where my passport is. <laughs> I should have prayed at the beginning, then yes. I could have saved myself two days of work. <laughs> but yes, yeah, the little thing is the little thing. It is the little thing. Well, that's a big thing, really. It's great. It's like on Friday, then, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because on Wednesday I spoke to the oncologist and they said, yes, I can continue my treatment. Collect the tablets Thursday. We went Thursday afternoon, no tablets. Oh. Um, they said, oh, um, we'll ring you. They didn't ring me, so I ran back because I knew it shut at six o'clock. Sorry, we've got problems with the suppliers. We can't get your tablets. And I said, well, they're not paracetamol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're cancer tablets. And um, they said, I'm sorry, there are more expensive ones we can get, but we need authorization. So I went Thursday night without my tablet. And then Friday, um, I went down to pop round and I told her, and she said, right, let's do a prayer, and we prayed. And about five minutes later, the phone rang, and it was <laughs> to say, 
They've authorised it. You can collect them later today. That's if they come in, they said. If they don't come in, you'll have to wait till Monday. As you probably know, we're praying for our son. And I said to her, well, you know what we're going to do with the chapel, we're going to start praying now. And Alison, who doesn't go anywhere, she says, well, it worked last time with Luke, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, uh, so it, you know, it's often, it, it happens. And we think, why didn't we go there first? Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, Sometimes we just need this reminding, don't we? Mm. I think you feel you can't keep asking. Yeah. <laughs> well, you feel yeah. like you're repetitive. Do we? Yes. That's interesting, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. 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 You yeah. just yeah. feel that you're always asking me to help me to make the right decision, yeah. to help somebody else make the right decision. Yeah. So I think I can't ask you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but I have another side of that, which I, I, I struggle a little bit with, which is that... I do believe that God has it planned out for us. Like, he already knows, he, she, whatever you want to call them, like, you know, that they already know what mistakes we're going to make and how we're going to react to them. Mm -hmm. And so he already knew that I would spend two days looking for my passport and then we would pray <laughs> about it. And that's kind of weird because I'm like, well, now I've prayed about them. Did it make any difference or is it just that God was waiting for me but to do that? That is a lesson. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. you should have looked on the top of the <laughs> I did I was mad. I don't think he has the power to say, come on, back the drawers. Oh, he does. he does. Whether he did, but he definitely does have the power. But he doesn't usually operate that yeah, way. But, <laughs> so you, <laughs> but there's a, can I just come back to that point there, though? Because I, I think it's really important that we don't ever get to the point of thinking, well, I can't bother God again with this one, because that's such a human reaction that we would say, oh, haven't you learned to sort it out for yourself yet? yet? Whereas actually, what God delights in is his children coming to him. Just and just one... yeah, yeah. Sorry, Jim, I was just going to say when we finish talking about it, it delights God when we turn to him. Yeah. But I think yeah, the only thing possibly is that we can be you don't want to feel that what he wants to happen is the end of the road for stuff that you're trying to pray for the other way, if you get what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It might, that's how it's got to be, but you don't want to know that because you keep wanting to pray and hope and everything else, so perhaps that's why I get a bit scared sometimes, so I can't ask you anymore. <laughs> yeah. So that's also interesting, isn't it? It's yeah. the sense in which we talked about praying, but praying is a two-way dialogue, yeah? And sometimes when we pray, what we hear, and we come away knowing, hey, that's not how we're to pray. That's not how we're to pray. And I have to say, so one of the liberating things I was saying about Jan's sort of experience praying in tongues, and, and I do much less of it than she does, but nevertheless, is that one can end up just mentioning a name and then praying in tongues and not letting your mind get round what is it that I want to happen, but just praying and praying in a way that you're really just praying, praying and just giving the situation to God and leaving it that, 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 that you, this is what you're concerned about and it's really up to him to work out the, the outcome. And um, because I know that we can sometimes be praying, Lord, you've got to do this and Lord, you've got to do that. And, and you look at word events and people say, what was happening and you only have to look at the old testament to see the way the lord worked through all of the kind of difficulties and everything else when when people are saying why have you left us alone god's saying uh -huh. no, why have you left me alone <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 and um you know uh, uh, and that's so often the case here that people people who <coughs> I, we, Jan and I often say about having conversations with people out there and something's gone wrong and they say, where's your God now? And you, and you go, well, where was he last week when everything was going well? Why is it, why is it suddenly God, you know, God should have been there for me? Yeah, but it, it's, it, it's just interesting, isn't it, with, 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 with these things? 
an interesting thing about what Sophie said, Paul said in one of his letters in a similar way, she was saying, right, we've done all we can in our own strength, done everything we can do to find this passport, and it's hopeless. Yeah. We don't know what we're going to do. And then she said, we're just going to have to pray, which is what you said God wanted you to do anyway. So, <laughs> and as soon as you did that, he, he took over where you couldn't go any further, and he helped. And yeah. Paul says, didn't he, in, um, that God says, in your weakness, I am strong, which means when you get to the end of the tether and you can't do anymore, mm -hmm. I step in and help. Yeah. Also, he chose Felix to find the passport, which is unheard of. Felix did not find the It's normally, where's this, where's this? It's here, dear. <laughs> <laughs> have you moved it? I have to move things sometimes because you leave everything out. <laughs> it is the conversation. <laughs> So, um, the piece that um, Tricia was speaking about is from Philippians, um, Philippians chapter 4, <coughs> verse 4 onwards. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Yeah, and um, um, I sometimes think there's a danger with speaking the peace. It's the idea that it's something that's imparted from elsewhere. But actually, what the, the scripture that's taken from says it's a consequence of doing the other things, yeah? That in order to get the peace of God that passes all understanding, you're presenting your request to God with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. And it's as we do that, that we get peace in the situation, as we rejoice in him. So that the peace is a consequence of our own 
um, choice rather than something sometimes it can be prayed for and some, you know it changes but in general living in a place where we have a peace of God is a is a consequence of our own spiritual life and our own relationship with God rather than something that happens because it's just imparted if you if you're not me but I mean I like the peace it's not but I'm just saying it can be uh, it, it, we, we need to remember it's a consequence of of our prayers. Okay, shall we move on to our next song, which is "O oh Church, Arise and Put Your Armour On." So, um, which seems, yeah, yeah, we don't, yeah, we don't, yes, yeah, Church, Arise and Put Your Armour On. And lots of things, lots of things that we've talked about are in this song. For now, the weak can say that they are strong in the strength that God has given. Oh. 
it's a bittersweet. Um, a couple of lines in that last verse. Go on. Um, no, I can't look up. Do you want me to put it up? We hunger. Where is it? The last verse. We hear their call, yeah, we, yeah, and hunger before the day when with Christ we stand in glory as Christians. That's our longing. That's you know to be with the Lord in eternal peace. But sometimes we can find ourselves in situations where, yes, we know that's can you speak up a bit? that's what we want. That's that. That's our, with our faith and our Christian walk. When we finally pass away, yeah. We know that that is our hope, and we, with God's mercy, will live with Him yeah. forever. Yeah. But sometimes it's a difficult concept when you want more of this life. <laughs> yeah. True. Sometimes, it's, and sometimes we can be thinking. I mean, there are times when you think, I, can't, I really can't do with any more of this life. Just get me, just get me to glory. Yeah, the, 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 you know, the sooner I can get there, the better. Uh, uh, and and yet we know we have to continue in faith in this in this life, isn't isn't it? But you're right. I mean, I think that we we very easily forget that sense of it being about eternity, don't we? And um, I would say that there's, within the church, because you get a big debate to that, between churches that focus mainly on thinking about how do we bring people to salvation, to eternal life, and, and, and others that would focus more on how do we make life better. Yes, uh, and there's a balance um, in, in terms of the way that we operate, which has to address both, because it's very hard to address the second without addressing the first, first um, but so but yeah mm -hmm. anyway I have a real sense of we've expressed lots of things to be grateful for today yeah and um, are there any other thing we don't need to repeat those are there any other things that people would really like to thank God for today of things that have happened well, I, I told you, I don't know if you told anyone else, on Thursday, Alice, Alison had the thing put down into his stomach, and that's clear, which is a big, big thing, because yeah. if it is cancer on a kidney, if it had been in his stomach as well, I mean, that would have been a... Yeah. But, so that's a big relief. Mm. And a big thank you for those who prayed. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to, I had two pieces of good news this week. Um, my daughter's had um, um, I can't his name now, vertigo. She's had vertigo for about three weeks and she couldn't do anything because she was being sick and every time she tried to even walk or turn her head, she was feeling sick so she couldn't do anything at all. So she was stuck just sitting, um, which is not like her at all. She found really difficult. Um, but she is gradually getting better now, so she's actually able to do half the day's work, I think, mm -hmm. tomorrow. So, um, so that's one piece of good news I've had. And then George had to go for, um, uh, to see the specialist yesterday. Um, he, they thought he'd got some cancer in his leg, in the bone. Um, two years ago he had an x-ray and they could see something in there. So he's been having scans every year. But this year they say that it, they think it's a cyst and it's not a, a cancer because it hasn't moved or done anything. So um, he's actually signed him off from that now and he's not going to go back. So, so that's two pieces of good news. Praise the Lord. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I just, I thought I said too much. <laughs> 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 it's not fine, you should find something else.
knowing that God's hand is on everything in our lives, um, good and bad. Because last week we sang towards the end of the service, and I was singing one just story, and I'm talking to Margie about it because in one of the verses it says, Days of darkness still may meet me, sorrow's path I often may tread. But his presence will still is still is with me by his guiding hand I am led. And I said to Mark last week I had a, um, a feeling that something um, was coming. And during, during the week, um, one of two things happened that took me back to the death of my sister. And there's still some ongoing matters that need to be cleared up. Um, and, and people probably found themselves in similar situations where until certain things happen, you can't feel that you're completely moving on from a given situation. And the, these things came in the post, and you, you sort of feel like you're settled a bit, and then something else comes up, to, and it takes you right, right t- took me right back to all those, but not quite so badly, but badly enough. And and days of darkness may still meet me. God knew. I had a feeling, a sense of God saying to me, "You're not through it yet." But during that last week, when it wasn't a great week emotionally, um, there were good things in the week in other ways. But he, I felt, looking back, as I was singing that last week, he'd given me a message to say. You're going to be upset, and I'll be with you. Mm-hmm. And he was, and that's what kept me going. And had I not known God, and the times when in my life, until my early forties, very early forties, about forty-one, and I came to know Jesus just gradually. I don't know how you know, I got through these times, mm-hmm. and, and it was just I thought, in, in, when I was feeling a bit ill. And I thought, God told me last week that he's with me now. And it was so uplifting. Mm. And it just helps you get through. And it helped me get through last week when I was starting to slip back into the difficulties that I've been through. So thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Tricia. Anybody else want to share anything? Lord, we thank you for all of your goodness to us. We thank you most of all that you gave yourself for us on the cross so that we can be forgiven, we can know your salvation, that we can walk with you. And we thank you for the different ways that we've known your presence and your love in this last week, Lord. And we pray that you'll help us to keep us always rejoicing with you, always coming to you with thanksgiving. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's think about situations we really need to pray about. We need to keep and pray for Lynn and her treatment for um, both of Jean's daughters and Jean in the, in, and Jean as the mum, which uh, is never easy when your children are going through it at any age. Um, and lift them before the Lord. He's hearing us as we speak. So let's. Uh, are there other situations that people would like us to pray for this morning? or the people that people would like us to pray for. This is Sam and Lexi, and we need to keep praying for her. For Lexi. For Lexi, yeah. And Margie's his daughter in law, Katie. And for Anne. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And sticking in there, aren't you, Anne? Hmm? You were hanging in there, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, you know all of the needs that we've just spoken about. You know, Lynn's situation and what her deepest needs are, Lord. You know Alison and Janine and everything that's going on. And you know the impact that has on Jean. You know about the challenges that Lexi faces with her diabetes and all the impacts of that. and. Uh, the way she finds that so difficult. And Lord, you know the struggles that Anne has at the moment with her knees and and general health. 
And Lord, we lift all of these situations and others that we haven't mentioned before you. And we ask, Lord, that you would move in power, that, pe that your grace and your love would be known. Lord, we ask it in Jesus' name. Shall we say the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Shall we move on to our notices? Right. <coughs> so we have um, refreshments after the service, thanks to all those who've participated in different ways. <laughs> I've caused some confusion <laughs> by misreading Lynn's email. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Um, it's been, uh, yeah, that's been great. So this coming Wednesday, um, we're okay for the Bible study, aren't we? Yeah. On Wednesday at our house. And then next Sunday, those who weren't at the church meeting won't know that we agreed at the church meeting that we do something a bit different next Sunday and have a sort of cafe church. So um, we, Jan and I went away and thought about how to make that work and thought the, easy, the best format would be to do it as a songs of praise where people can come and choose a hymn. I can't remember what we discussed at the meeting and what we kind of filled in afterwards. But... And, and actually, what I'll do is I won't prepare a message of stuff, but we'll take the message from whatever hymns are chosen so that uh, it reflects what people have, have asked for. So um, we'll obviously, you know, we'll spend a bit of time praying. Um, we want to make it so that if people do come with families, we make them welcome. And if, you know, if that happens, the children come, we'll provide them with, we'll get something with for them to do and sing something suitable um, and that will work fine in that kind of format. I think we said at the church meeting about having breakfast at 10, we were thinking actually 10.15 would be plenty of time. So if we start at 10, so breakfast served from 10 and onwards. You so said 10.15? 10.15, sorry. <laughs> you printed it, she's printed, she, it was, it's her who said 10.15. <laughs> Yeah, and, it, and we can so carry on through. So it, sorry. Oh, when it finishes. <laughs> it's no good me coming at twelve o'clock one no, breakfast. No, no. See, it's not. <laughs> we're, we're, saying saying the, the, we're saying the service bit. The leaflet says the service bit starts at ten forty-five as yeah. usual. Yeah. So John's prepared some. So I'm only, John's prepared some invitations. And yeah. No, you don't have to be here for 10. No, you don't have to be here. Normal time, it'll be all right. Yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah that's what we say. Yeah, you can 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 say. Yeah, you how long? Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> we only need nine o'clock, will we? Half nine. Half nine will be plenty, won't it? Yeah, we're only doing quite some of the Yeah, we're only doing quite some of the cereals. Why? Why? <laughs> 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 
So the, the invitations are there, so people can take them. If you could, th you know, think of people you can just encourage to come. It's especially it's, uh, the idea of doing this is to encourage different people to come. It's very, it'll be very light, and uh, there'll be some food. So it's an opportunity just to in, ask different people. Okay. Yeah, whatever, whatever you feel led in terms of of sharing it with other people. And if we if we run out, we can soon print some more. That's not difficult. Okay. Are you okay to play yeah. the last hymn, Jean? Which is, great is thy faithfulness. God was faithful to Nehemiah. He's faithful all the way through the Bible and he remains faithful today. So one that we all know, I know. Might be the same line or the same two lines, but God is pressing this message home, so we must be alert. <laughs> God needs words. <laughs>